Welcome back everybody. We got Buck and Tony from US Ordnance and we're checking out that gun you saw in the intro, which is the vastly improved version of the M60. In fact, I had a brief experience with this in my younger days with the original M60. Uh, just brief exposure like we talked about, but this thing is a different animal. So if you could guys, could you walk us through some of the changes that you made to this thing to make it the weapon system we see today? Sure. All right, I'll start from the front of the gun and work my way back. Basically, we've taken the old barrel, cutting it shorter, Give the, give the gun a better balance, something that's more compact so an individual operator can move with it. We've shortened the gas extension here so mission dependent, you can fit a suppressor over your flash suppressor if you need to. We've gone with an adjustable front sight which the original pig didn't have, it was fixed. On the construction of the barrel itself we've gone with a Stellite liner which has given the barrel a lot longer barrel life and accuracy. On our lightweight bipod we've now moved the bipod where it is off of the barrel and onto the receiver and we've added QD sling swivel sockets on both sides of the bipod legs. The handguard, as you see, is one piece aluminum machined. It has a bottom rail on both side sit and both side rails. Rear sight, we've gone with a regular rifle type rear sight as opposed to the old bladed pistol sight like on an AK or a 1911 target pistol. Going into the top cover, also machined aluminum with the top rail so you can mount any kind of optic you need to. We've gone with a larger diameter charging handle as opposed to the very small one that was found on the original pig. And you can see on the grip assembly, we're now using a spring and lock pin to hold it in place as opposed to the old leaf spring that you used to have to pop. The bandolier bracket has been fixed to the side of the receiver so it's not bouncing around like on the original pig. And we've also cut this corner off so whether you're right or left handed you can operate the uh, trigger assembly easier. Internally on the gun, there's been a host of different changes. While he's taking it apart, one thing I'm going to tell you from, these guys know the mechanics of it much better than I ever will, but I can tell you from an operator, somebody who would have to use some sort of medium machine gun, general purpose machine gun, uh, the optics advantages they have both with the, the peep sight on the rear now as well as the ability to mount an optic on there. When you get out beyond two, 300 meters in terms of engagement distance, that's gonna make all the difference in the world, being able to get rounds on target quickly and effectively. So uh, definitely something that's gonna help you eliminate the threat or put heads down if nothing else. But anyway, back on to what's going on on the inside because there's definitely some changes there too. If you look at the bottom of our op rod, the original pig had one sear notch. We've now gone with a three sear notch option and what that allows you to do is if the operator is only half cocking the weapon and releases the bolt, it's the sear is going to catch on these notches and prevent it from having an ND. So it's an added safety feature that didn't cause any bad effects with the function of the weapon itself. We've gone with a much thicker drive rod. If you look at the drive rod on the original pick, it's kind of like a toothpick. This one is over twice the diameter. When looking inside on the actual feed tray itself, We've added this third lug and what that does, it's a belt retention pole. And even with the top cover open, it'll maintain your ammo on the feed tray. Your belt won't fall off into the ground or in, back into your ammo pouch, however you're carrying it. On the buttstock itself, we've gone with a lighter weight buttstock with an aluminum butt plate. As you see, we have QD uh, sling swivel sockets on both sides of it. it. Still has the shoulder retention mount if the operator deems he needs to use it. And this back plate is actually a piece of machined aluminum. On the old, uh, the old pig, it was a fixed piece that used to wear wear out really easily. And this one is much more durable and much lighter than the old butt stock as well. We've also added the ergonomic grip for if you're firing from a fixed position, you can get that good tuck into your shoulder with it. So those are the major upgrades to it. Tony, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, a couple other things. Um, with this, with this third. Uh, notch in the op rod it also allows uh, if, if you start wearing on your uh, notches yep. then it, it cuts down the the probability of having a, a runaway gun type scenario um, what also was built up that was huge in this uh, weapon system compared to the m60 basic was uh, about 40 percent more uh, belt pull yep. for the ammunition coming into the gun so basically on the inside of this top cover major parts and pieces were built up. Right here on the feed lever, it was built up. The feed paws were also built up along with the cartridge uh, guides. And then the feed, the, the belt holding paw right here uh, on, the, on the feed tray were all modifications that were 
were all a, a problem with the old system, but U.S. Ord uh, made it a point to to build up those uh, those parts and pieces. Um, you can also, just like with any other, you know, say a 240 or a saw, sure. the old weapon system, the M60 Basic, you could only load one way. You had to pull the bolt all the way back to the rear. Make sure that the linear roller cam lined up with the feed lever, and then you'd slap it down. This weapon system, it really doesn't matter whether the bolt's forward or to the rear. Um, the, it's instead of it being, you know, the spring tension in the in the roller cam itself, it's right here in the top cover. So basically, if the roller isn't aligned, you slap down the top cover, pull it back to the rear, and by the time it gets back to the rear, it'll be realigned. Right. Yeah. So like he was talking about, some of those pieces are beefed up in there, but the overall weight of the gun is down. When I first got behind it and just grabbed that pistol grip, the balance was totally different than what I was used to. I think they took, what, five pounds? Is that... Yeah, we had to make it around 20 pounds okay. in order for it to be a competitive gun. Okay. Yeah, so it really balances a lot better than the old M62 for sure. And obviously it has all the modular features. You can add uh, optics, uh, lasers, lights, whatever you want on the front with the 1913 style rails up front. But it's definitely, it's a, it's not your daddy's M60, that's for sure. Um, there's just, it feels completely different and functions from everything I've seen and heard on the, on the internet and these tests that these guys have run, functions a lot better as well. So, anything else you guys wanted to add? No, it's just a great uh, gun. It, it gives you more, gives you more shooting platforms. You can you can effectively engage in in short distances in a standing or in a kneeling position, yep. uh, and then it, it doesn't worry out as much on a patrol because of its lightweight. Absolutely. But I want to thank these guys for coming by today, and obviously wanted to thank Larry Vickers for hosting us out here today. If you guys haven't subscribed to his channel, please go ahead and do so. There'll be a link here in the video, and uh, we'll uh, cut to a little more shooting video, which I know is what you guys want to see anyway. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.